year and playing against a very good side. Apart from the second quarter, I thought our effort for three quarters was, you know, was really good and I thought we tackled hard and competed and that's what we probably wanted to get out of today. To cricket in South Australia has plenty of work to do when day two of its Shield Clash resumes at Glenelg with Victoria 4 for 347. And the NRL season kicked off last night with South Sydney starting its Premiership defence in style with a 36 to 6 rout of Brisbane. And that's the 5AA Sport. Now the 5AA forecast. The Good Guys Kitchen Talk with Katrina Roundtree. Tips and ideas to design your perfect kitchen online at thegoodguys.com.au. Partly cloudy today, 24. Cloudy over the weekend, 25 for Saturday, 27 on Sunday. A possible shower and 26 for the public holiday Monday. Then mostly sunny Tuesday, 26. Right now it's 16 degrees. More news as it happens on 5AA. This is 5AA Breakfast, thanks to Jeep. When it comes to superior performance, luxury and attention to detail, the Jeep Grand Cherokee has it all. Good morning, everyone. Good to be with you. Stay listening because later in the show, 5AA will be giving one lucky listener the chance to win a WOM Adelaide experience. We spoke about WOMAD at the top of the show and it's going to be an absolutely spectacular three days. Well, this time last week, our Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, was in New Zealand for talks with the New Zealand Prime Minister, John Key, about the fact that the Kiwis were upping their commitment to the war on terror. Mr Abbott also went to that extraordinary cricket match on uh, on uh, Saturday. Australia, New Zealand, yeah. Yeah, unbelievable. Mm. And we're joined now by Selwyn Manning, our new regular from over the ditch every Friday from livenews.co.nz. Hey, Selwyn, before we get to the uh, news of the day in New Zealand, I just wanted to ask you, mate, that the, what was the reaction like to that cricket match? Because I've never seen anything like it. It was extraordinary. I think everyone's fingernails were bleeding, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you know, go? The tension was such. But yeah, I think you know at, at, at the break, at midway through the game, New Zealand thought it had it in the bag. Yeah. Uh, it really did, but it, everyone thought it was going to be a batter's wicket, you know, with the short boundaries. Um, you know, it was mm. the ball looked like it would probably play all right. But when when you guys, um, you know, well, let's just put it this way: uh, when we everybody realised that it was actually a bowler's day, um, mm. it was all on, and it was. Just sheer relief on the Kiwi side uh, when, when that six was played and it actually went over the, the fence, you know, uh, for that right at the end of the game to win it. I don't think any side uh, was crowing about that game, but people were saying it was the best game of cricket because it was so evenly battled mm. that they'd ever seen. You, you know, you're you're in Wellington, game. aren't you, mate? So you wouldn't have been able to go given that the game, the game was in Auckland, no. wasn't it? No, I'm based up in Auckland. Oh, so um, did you, so, get to, did yeah, you go? No. No, I didn't go, but um, you look, I was sitting, in the, and it's not on the free TV stations over this end of the ditch either, so mm. what I was doing is listening on radio, and I could hear the crowd, because I live not far from the park, and I could hear the crowd just exploding, you know, <laughs> so watching on, on, the, on the online and things like that. It was like going back to the old days, got old days, Dave, you know, where you'd be sitting around a radio station listening to the crackle and that to see what your team's doing. Yeah, it's funny. I, I actually stopped watching when you guys were batting. I thought, oh, this is going to be all over and done with in minutes. So I went and gardened, and about 20 minutes later, my nine-year-old son came out and said, Dad, you got to come inside. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, mate, look, no, moving, uh, moving yeah. on, um, this, is, this yeah. is quite an extraordinary investigation that this team of New Zealand journalists have done, and they've discovered that the NZ government has been spying on a massive scale on a host of Pacific nations. Yeah, that's right. Now, the spying um, has been taken part by um, the US-led Five Eyes Alliance that includes US, Canada, Britain, Australia and New Zealand. But what, what's been revealed this week, Dave, is uh, the New Zealand contribution to this kind of effort. Um, the investigation is a collaborative effort, I should say, between the New Zealand Herald, which is New Zealand's largest newspaper, um, investigative journalist Nikki Hager and the US news site The Intercept, which Glenn Green, Greenwald, the uh, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist, um, operates. Now, the reports are based on a cache of official documents released by US whistleblower Edward Snowden. I guess most people would know about Edward Snowden and all the news reports that have been surrounding the revelations that he has been at the heart of. Um, the documents specifically, Dave, say that um, New Zealand has been intercepting all communications taking place in the southwest Pacific and some parts of Melanesia. Now, those countries include Fiji, Samoa, Tonga, 
uh, the realm of New Zealand nations, which is the Cooks, um, Tukalau, small nations like that, Nui, um, uh, Tuvalu, Nauru, New Caledonia, uh, Solomon Islands, and French Polynesia. So there's some sensitive territory. Well, I was going to ask that, mate, because moving on. a lot of these little nations would, would probably regard New Zealand as the, the bigger colonial power and take umbrage at the fact that you've been eavesdropping on them, wouldn't they? Some of them are, particularly those that are from the islands and representing the island's interests here in New Zealand have taken that line. They are appalled mm. in saying that the sensitivities are going to be very high. The Samoan Prime Minister, however, has just said, look, I'm, I'm surprised, but in quote here he says, um, we have nothing to hide, which is what a lot of people say when they realise that a lot of their own communications is caught up in this kind of mess. Yeah. Um, but it, 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 look, it... it the data is, is acquired, and it's millions and millions and millions of communications every day. Mm. The, the size of it is something like out of a science fiction novel. The technology was provided by the United States um, to New Zealand. New Zealand's um, GCSB, it's our surveillance, electronic surveillance government. GCSB stands for Government Security, uh, <laughs> Government Communication Security Bureau is what it stands for. And it's basically, you, you guys in Australia have got the equivalent. Um, Britain's got the equivalent up there, the GCHQ. Um, the New, United States has got its equivalent with the NSA or the National Security Agency. Where, where all of this is um, going is the data is collected by New Zealand um, at one of the sites here, and then it is transferred to the United States, Dave, where then the Five Eyes Nations which is, you know, the United States, Canada, uh, Britain, Australia and New Zealand, the security analysts can then access that information um, through X key score. Some people who follow this kind of stuff um, would, would recognise that, that program, X key score, as one of the things where if someone wanted to, OK, let's check out what Dave has been talking about, or who he's been talking about, and who the people Dave has been talking about, who they have been talking about as well, they can, uh, analysts can go to X key score dial in your, um, your, basically your identification and zoom through and trawl through all of that massive amounts of information and get a hit on you and pretty much know what you've been talking about from today going back to 2009. Mm, no, it's going to be a difficult one for the government over there to manage. And look, just quickly and finally, so in this um, amazing story about Stan Douglas, the World War II veteran who wandered down to his letterbox this week and found an interesting looking package. Yeah, it's a delightful story from the Hawke's Bay region. It's like the Barossa Valley of New Zealand, the Hawke's Bay. Um, yes, Stan Douglas, um, World War II veteran. He, he used to sail, Dave, on a vessel in World War II um, called the HMS Javelin, and I understand it accompanied ships to the northern Russian port of Murmansk, um, and it was under heavy sea conditions, um, targeted by German destroyers, bombers and U-boats. He said it was hell. But anyway, out of yeah, like you said, you know, he went to the letterbox. Um, what came back? He opened this, this envelope and there was a medal uh, with an accompanying letter from the Russian ambassador and it said, uh, the President of the Russian Federation, Mr Vladimir Putin, decorates you for your participation in the Arctic convoys of the Allied forces to the Russian northern sea ports during the Second World War. He said this was something that um, no, um, this one, well, Dave's quote here, uh, sorry, Stan's quote is, this one was quite a surprise, end of quote. So there's a humble man. <laughs> That's a great story. It would be quite a surprise. Selwyn Manning from livenews.co.nz. Great talking to you, mate. 6.43, police media time now. Senior Constable Kimberly Broad. Hi, Kimberly.